Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I haven't uploaded a video in quite some time now. It's been like about two months or so. Um, the reason for that is because I had my baby two months ago. Um, I also already recorded this first part of the video a little bit ago, but it got deleted by accident. So I'm re-recording this part. So basically what I had said um what i had started saying um was that i'll tell you guys my story my story of my labor and delivery and i had said also that i had made breakfast and some coffee and i was going to tell you guys as i ate my breakfast and my coffee um and then i also uh was telling you guys that my labor and delivery wasn't um as smooth as i wanted it to be because i couldn't go into labor on my own i had to get induced because i wasn't getting any contractions and i was already 40 plus weeks pregnant so then um, i was telling you guys that i had an appointment on friday with my doctor and he was surprised that i had gone into that appointment because i was already um three and a half centimeters dilated um, before I went into that appointment, so the appointment before that appointment, I was three and a half centimeters dilated. So then on that appointment, he was surprised that I went in. So he scheduled an induction for that following Sunday. So then um, the appointment lady had said that it was more than likely that I wasn't going to get called in that Sunday, even though it was for that Sunday in the morning. They said that it might take like another day because they usually like take a while to actually call you in for your appointment to get induced. So then um, I said that it went the a whole day had gone by and like the whole Sunday had gone by and, and they hadn't called me. And then the whole next day had gone by the next Monday and they still didn't call me. But. I, in the meantime, I was actually trying to call them and I kept calling them and asking them if they had any room available yet for me or not. And they kept saying that they didn't. And um, the following uh, day on Tuesday, um, his mom wanted to go to the doctor and go in. So I think that's why I left off um, in the rest of the video. So... I'll just let the past me continue telling you the story. Okay, so back to what I was saying. Now that my baby's here in his little PJs. We're very, you know, PJ dressed today. Okay, so back to what I was saying. Um, my uh, husband's mother uh, called us early in the morning. Like, it was like 5 in the morning. And then she said, oh, we should go into the hospital and wait there. You know, like, I'm sure they'll call us today, you know. So we go to the hospital and we we ask, we tell them we let them know that we're, that we're there at the hospital waiting, and the the nurse tells me well it doesn't matter if you're here basically you know like she says it nicer but like she basically says it doesn't matter from there they're still gonna call me whenever they're gonna call me. So then um, she says but if you wanna wait you can wait there you know but it's probably more comfortable for you to wait at your house. You know? So then um, we're waiting in the lobby. Oh my god, we wait there for like, like three hours. And um, his mom still wanted to stay there longer. Like, I was like, okay, I'm tired of being here. I want to go home and sleep, you know. And um, so basically, she, she says, okay, fine. You know, we finally go home. Actually, we go to her house. We go to her house and we continue to wait there. And, um, yeah, so we continue to wait at her house. And then um, finally, like, around, um, like, I think it was, like, 930 yeah, it was like 9.30. I finally got a call. It was 9.30 p.m. It was 9.30 p.m. on a Tuesday. And I finally got a call from the hospital. And they finally tell me like, oh, um, we have a room. We have a bed ready for you. Uh, how long do you think it'll take you to get here? So then I was like about 30 minutes. I left 30 minutes away from the hospital. So then they're like, okay, that's perfect. So then um, I, I tell my husband, okay, let's go. Um and the the mom his mom and his dad took forever to like get ready like they really wanted to go with us so basically they took forever to get ready we got there like um like around 10 11 or, some, or so so then i'm gonna get to the hospital i tell them that, that i'm there for the room 
they helped me fill up some paperwork and I ended up going into the room into the, like, into the room that they had waiting for me to like around 11 so at 11 they have me sitting sitting in the room and the the nurse comes and she tells me like oh to get undressed she gives me like the little nightgown thing the hospital gown and she gives it to she gives it to me I get undressed I um I remember feeling really awkward so I went to get to change into the restroom so um I changed in the restroom oh I felt awkward because his mom was in the room like she was not leaving at all like she just wanted to be in that room like the entire time like she did not give us any privacy at all so I went to go change in the room because she was there you know <laughs> um uh, so she was in the room and she was not leaving so then I went to go change in the restroom and then after I came out I uh I sat on the bed waited for my nurse to come back and then uh, my nurse told me that she was going to inject, uh, not inject, but she was going to uh, set up the IV into my uh, hand. And then uh, another nurse was setting up the, like the, the what's it called, the, the, the readers to read like my contractions and read his pulse. So afterwards, I, maybe have so much hiccups, he's moving the whole camera. <laughs> so... Uh, they set up the readers and everything, and so then my my nurse, my overnight nurse, was in and then she asked me like, "Well, was I going to get induced?" And I told her that that's because I wasn't going into labor on my own. So then she said, "Oh, okay." So then she starts to like prepare everything to have the IV, um, give me like the medicine so I could go into labor and start having contractions, right? And then um, as she's like setting that up on her computer. She looks at the monitor and she and she asks me like, "Do you not feel that?" And I was like, "What am I supposed to be feeling? I don't feel anything." And then she was like, "You're having a contraction right now, honey." And I was like, "Seriously?" And then she was like, "Yeah." And then I I was like, "So that's how that feels? Like I have not I have not known what it feels like." So so basically, to me, it just felt like I had to use the restroom, like number two, you know, like really bad, but like like that pain that you get when you have to go number two and, and you just need to go that's what I have been feeling this entire time like I hadn't felt like actual pain you know um the entire time so I didn't know those were contractions so um so then she proceeds to like hook me up to the machine and stuff so then um uh, afterwards uh my husband's mom she leaves real quick to my husband's dad wanted uh, a coffee or something so they, they go to go get a coffee and when they come back um it's only her this time so the husband left like he went home to sleep and the mom stayed so my mother-in-law stayed and then she tells me jokingly like oh me and your father-in-law have a bet going on to see how long you'll last uh without epidural like we want to see if he'll cry right and so then i was like thinking like i don't think i'm gonna cry you know so then she, she's like, we'll see. Like, she pretty much was saying, oh, but she was the one that, was, that thought I was going to cry. And my father-in-law said that I wasn't going to cry, you know. So then um, I was like, I don't think I'm going to cry. Like, if I, if I haven't felt my contractions up to now, I don't think I'm going to cry. So then anyway, um, the, my nurse was going to be coming in every single 30 minutes to check on me and to up the dose for the um, contraction medicine. I don't know what it's called. I forgot what it's called. Um, so she was going to be coming in every, she was going to be coming in every 30 minutes to up that dose. So then, um, uh, she comes in like the, by the third time and she tells me like, oh, when do you want to, she asked me, do you want to do an epidural? And I said, yes. So I was like, I do. And then she said, when do you want to do it? So then I said, I'll hold up, I'll hold off a little, a little more. And then she said, okay, just don't hold off too long to where you can't, um, stay still for, for when he comes in to actually inject you. So then I said, okay. So then I go into the restroom, you know, I, I um, use the restroom. Because I know from what I... Oh, you think it's funny? Huh? You think it's funny? So from what I've heard is um, once you get the epidural, you can't move, you know. Like you're basically a vegetable on that bed, you know. You can't do anything on your own anymore. So I went to go use the restroom. And then I um, walked up, walked around a little bit. And then um, I went back into bed. So then she, she comes in for the fourth time and then she tells me like, oh, are you ready? And I was like, yes. So then she said, okay, so um, in 30 minutes, he, um, he's going to come. He uh, um, has the epidural like 
being given to somebody else at that moment. So then she tells, so then I ask her, um, does it matter when I get it done? Like, is it going to, like, be less effective if I wait off or if I, if I get it right now? And then she said that, no, it doesn't really matter because we have a button. So, so basically, we have a button next to our bed. So whenever we want more, we could just press it. And then, but obviously, you can't overdose on it. Like, they have it, like, made so that you can't um, give yourself more than, more for longer than, I think it was, like, 15 minutes or, like, 30 minutes. I think I had to wait, like, 15 minutes for you to be able to, like, up your dose again or, like, give another. It's not like you're not upping your dose. You're, like, giving yourself another, like, shot of it, you know? So, um, so, yeah, so she tells me that. So, I was like, so then I said, okay. So then I said that um, she comes in the fifth time, and then by, by the fifth time she says, "Oh, um, okay, we're ready for you," you know. So then um, he's gonna come in and he's gonna uh, give you the epidural, and um, I was like, "Ready?" Oh, this entire time I was not feeling any pain. I I just wanted to have the epidural done, just so I wouldn't feel him actually coming out of me. Like this entire time I had not felt any kind of contraction pains, no nothing. Which is, I know is weird, but I hadn't felt any. My whole thing with the epidural, I just wanted not to feel him, me, you know, rip my kitty. So, that's, like, the only reason that I didn't, I wanted the epidural. So then, um, yeah, yeah, which he did, he did rip me, but back to the point in the story we're in right now. So, the guy comes in. And he tells me, like, what everything he's going to do. He tells me, me, like, what everything he's going to do. He tells me that he's going to, uh... I haven't even ate my food. Oh, shit. I just dropped some egg all over my blanket. I'm not even eating my food. So he tells me that he's gonna um, give me like some local anesthesia, like right there, where he's gonna inject the epidural. He says that it's gonna feel like a little bee sting, right? And so then um, the nurse um, tells everybody to leave, and only my husband could stay. So my husband sits in between my legs, and he's just like staring at me. And then the nurse has me put a pillow in um, on my lap. It has me like arch over it. Um, or like hunch over it, you know, like I'm like over the pillow so that I could arch my back really perfectly for the um, anesthesiologist to inject, you know, the giant needle into my back. Okay, so yeah, so um, he tells me it's going to be a little, a little like, feel like a little bee sting, so he sting, he stings me. He uh, injects it to me. Um, and then afterwards, um, another like anesthesiologist comes, so they both like, check and like prep my back and they insert the epidural um they insert the epidural um needle into my back and they asked me a few questions and they asked me a few questions they asked me um after they had injected it injected injected me they asked me if okay so basically <laughs> oh my baby's like over here smiling and stuff okay so he um where was I? I lost my my train of thought. Oh, okay. So they asked me, you know, all of those questions about if I feel any um sulfur taste in my mouth or if I have a, a headache that won't go no, go away. And then um I say no, I don't have any of those. So then they're like, okay, so it's good. So then he explains to me my button, my little clicker button, and he tells me how it works, and he tells me that. Um, if I ever start to feel too much pain, um, or it, it starts to wear off, to just click the button and it'll, like, shoot another, like, a little dose of it throughout my, like, body. But anyway, oh, he also tells me that, uh, I'm, I might feel sleepy, like, really sleepy, but it's not because, um, of the epidural, but it's because I feel so relaxed and I haven't felt so relaxed in such a long time that I'm gonna feel sleepy. Which I guess is true because oh my god, like right after he left and like all the medicine started to go through my body, I felt so good. I had never felt so good in my entire life. Like that epidural made me feel like I was asleep. 
like everywhere like i had n no feeling anywhere like like below my chest you know below my chest under i was just like not there like my body i could not feel anything but it felt so good i took a nap like i went to sleep for like six hours like i was asleep my labor the whole total everything was like 12 hours so yeah so um i was asleep for a long time um my husband he fell asleep next to me like on the little like recliner like couch thingy and um his mom finally left she finally left us alone after so long of just being there um i just wanted more privacy but she was there the entire time like i just wanted to be alone and she wouldn't take no hints like i kept telling my husband to to tell her like oh tell your mom it's okay that she could go home and she doesn't need to be here like she could go home we'll call her when the baby's here and she would not take no hints She's like no it's okay it's okay i want to be here it's like seriously like take the hint ma'am take the hint so anyway i was asleep i had the nurses like the nurse the nurse my overnight nurse she would come in still every 30 minutes to up the dose um and then at one point my nurse took a lunch like a lunch break and some other nurse came in and she like flipped me a little to my side but she f effed up okay so basically she did that she made my son's head go like a little more angled down to the left side and um so that at that point he, i stopped um what's it called opening up you know my my cervix stopped opening because of her i see my dog over here touching stuff bullseye so basically uh, my cervix stopped opening up because of that lady you know because my head's my son's head was just like you know stuck you know anyway um i think like maybe like an hour later uh because it was already like pretty late like no like maybe like two hours later my nurse comes back um like my overnight nurse oh by the way i loved her so much she was like the, be the best nurse i had ever like dealt with in my entire life she was amazing and she was so nice but um yeah so she comes back she comes back to tell me that her shift is over uh, so my new nurse is gonna be this other lady right uh i did not like her at first she was so rough and aggressive with everything you know like like okay like since i couldn't move on my own because i was like numb like, like i was just a vegetable laying on that bed i couldn't move on my own she would expect me expect me to move my legs on my own. Like she would tell me like, oh roll over. Like okay, I'm gonna roll over on my own. Like help me. Like my other overnight nurse, she would like help me roll over whenever she needed me to roll over. She would like push my legs, you know. And I would just like roll over my my upper body, you know. No, this lady was like roll over. Like I was like seriously like um, me, I'm gonna roll over on my own. Okay. So then um so then I kept telling her like I can't like I can't move my legs. So then she she finally like was like okay so she would like help me but it's like seriously like, I have to keep telling you every single time that I can't move my legs. So then um so yeah so my my overnight nurse left I was stuck with this lady so then she checks my cervix you know because they have to check it like I think like every three hours they like, don't check it that often because um they don't want to give you an infection you know so then she checks my cervix and she's and checks how dilated it is but then she notices that my son's head is you know not in the right spot so then she gets like a little worried so then she goes and asks um like another nurse to check me and they realize that yeah my head my son's head is like a little to the left so then they start moving me so then they put like this ball in between my legs and they flip me to the other side and then like for an hour and then again to the other side for another hour and at one point um they actually had me on my left side for way too long i st I could start feel i started feeling everything on my left side like and at this point the contractions were actually really strong because i was already it had already been like maybe like nine hours or like yeah like about nine or ten hours already since like i had been there so at this point i could i could feel everything on my left side and then um the nurse comes and checks me again and she and she sees that i'm like more dilated um they pop my uh the water the water bag that my son's in they open it um and then they uh tell me that he, that i'm already like more dilated that everything's okay and then 
I remember how, how dilated I was. I think I was like around like eight maybe. Yeah, I think I was like eight centimeters dilated. So then um, they still have me on my left side and I'm and I could still feel everything. So then like an hour another hour passes and they finally put me on um, my right side. And then um, like the, the, not even like 30 minutes pass and they switch me back to my left side. So then um, it's been like another hour and the nurse finally comes and checks me and she sees that my son's head is perfectly centered now i don't know why i'm doing this with my, with my face that's mm, no okay so so they check and my son's perfectly centered in the little hole in my uterus you know not my 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 cervix he's centered in my cervix okay so um my food's like over here getting cold because I keep forgetting that I have food. Mm. This is delicious. Y'all ever need a chef? Call me. I'm good at making eggs. I'm good at making eggs and toast. Mm. Okay. So basically, like I was like already like already there. I was already like at the, at the ten, ten centimeter mark. I was ready to start pushing. But then, um, so my nurse asked me, "Oh, are you ready to start pushing?" And I was like, no. And she and she asked me why. And I told her that I, it's because I could feel everything on my left side. Like, and it wasn't even like I could feel it in my cervix or in my kitty, you know. Like all of my contractions that would that I would feel. Since the, the part that was awake and that, that was like not numb anymore was my leg. And part of my butt cheek. That was like all I could feel. That's where I would feel the contraction. So every time that I would have a contraction... I would feel it in my leg and it would hurt so bad. So then I would tell her. So I told my, my nurse. I was like, oh, no, I'm not ready. I could feel all of my contractions, like, on my leg. So then she said, okay, like, um, we'll wait 30 minutes. Like, we'll have you lay down all the way flat. Because they had me sitting kind of like this, you know. So they laid me all the way back. So then um, and she takes off the ball. And then they, um, yeah, so they had me laying all the way back. And then um, they tell me to just let them know when I'm like numb again, right? So I press my little button and it shoots another like bunch of medicine throughout my leg, my body. Oh, by the way, every single time that you press a button, it feels cold. Like your whole like spine, your like legs, everything where the medicine is going, it just feels so cold. Like, like. It's like the cold, coldest thing ever. It's like if you just like were like running ice through your whole back, you know, like a lot of ice. So um, I press my little button and I feel cold, and I was like, okay, well at least I know that it's working. So then, um, it, maybe like 15, 20 minutes pass, and then my nurse comes back and she asks me like, oh, are you ready to start pushing? So then I said yes. And then she tells me, like, if I start to feel any kind of pain, um, to just press the button again. But keep in mind, I can only press it, um, once every 15 minutes. So then, um, they, they start prepping me. My nurse, she, she has, um, her, like, a little follower, like, learner apprentice with her, you know? So then I was like, okay, well, that one's, that one person's okay. But then she comes and tells me, like, oh, can these other two people come and see you give birth you know so then i was like okay you know so then they um they're there you know observing and oh by the way my husband's mother has not left and i didn't want her there like you know i had made it specifically like clear and i had to my husband that when i'm gonna start pushing to have this baby i want your mom out you know like i don't want her here so he like again tells her nicely and she's like no it's okay i'll stay like like seriously like do you not get what i'm trying to tell you here like seriously 
so then uh she stays you know and then um she's like talk me through it like you know just like ugh, like uh, i kind of don't want you here but fine so then um my nurse uh she's like okay are you ready and i was and i told her yes i'm ready so then she walks me through the pushing you know she tells me to um so on, on every contraction um i have to breathe in really deeply and then uh like hold in my my breath that i held in and push and then um as i'm like pushing to exhale out my my deep breath and we do that for a count of three seconds i think it was no a count of 10 seconds three times throughout a con through one contraction so um i ended up only pushing for like 20 minutes and um it was pretty fast you know i pushed for 20 minutes the the two nurses that came in to like observe they were holding my my legs back and um we're like pushing them back and then um uh, my husband's mother uh my mother-in-law she was pushing my my back forward so um so i would take like, a little break between each push you know like they would like go and then i would like lay down and then they would push me again and i would start pushing um the nurse even though i didn't like her she was actually really good at talking me through like the actual pushing like she was like really good like she was like she made it so easy for me to like push my baby out because she was so good at talking it through oh and then also my epidural started to wear off uh because they messed up like it was so good but like it started to wear off a little bit like i wasn't feeling pain like a lot of pain but i, I could still like feel like i basically started to feel when my son was actually like on the outer rim of my canal I didn't um, click the button anymore. I guess I had used maybe too much and I couldn't click the button anymore for like a while. So then I had to wait. Uh, so my son was out. When, when he was finally out, I was able to click the button again. Uh, the After my son was like basically out of my canal, um, the nurse calls the doctor and the doctor comes in and he's the one that talks to you, talks you through the last like few pushes, you know, like like the last like one one or two pushes. He's the one that talks you through them. So, um, yeah, so I needed like one more push and then, um, one or, I needed two more pushes. So the doctor comes in and then he uh, tells me to push one more time and then he's like almost out. So then I push another time and then he comes out, you know, and like when he comes out, you, you feel so relieved. Like I felt so relieved when he was actually out. So then, um, when he came out, they put him on me right away and then, uh, my husband cut the umbilical cord. They put him right. They put him on me right away, skin to skin. I started crying. Like I cried so much right when they put him on me. I felt so relieved that I was done being pregnant, that I was done pushing, that I just had my son here with me, and I um I had never felt so relieved in my entire life. Like honestly, I felt so good knowing that he was actually out. I felt like me again because my whole pregnancy, I just felt so not me like i felt like like i couldn't be myself for some reason i don't know like it was just so depressing being pregnant so i'm lucky um that my son's alive that i have my son here with me because i don't think i'm gonna have another baby this is my one and only child um i don't want another one i only need him he's all i need i love him to death he's the best baby i could have ever asked for he's so calm he's an amazing baby Anyway, back to uh, my story. So, yeah, so they place him on me. Um, they start stitching me up after my husband cuts him like a cord. Uh, they start stitching me up. Oh my god, I felt all of those stitches and it felt so uncomfortable and painful. Like, especially because I think the doctor that was stitching me up was learning how to stitch. Like, they had, she, he, he had another doctor telling him where to stitch so then basically she was like over like over my leg she was like she was like over my leg like you know like on my side she was like and then um like looking at me at my kitty and she was like telling him okay well stitch here and go here and do this you know so basically he stitched me and he like messed up a couple times because I could I could hear her telling him 
oh, um, you, it's okay. It's okay. You can fit, you just go over here, you know? So it's like, like, seriously? So, um, that's how that went. Uh, and then afterwards, they, um, they made everybody get out of the room. Because they ask you that once you give birth, is it okay if family members stay? Or do you want to stay with your baby alone for the two hours? So then I said, no, I want everybody to leave and only my husband stay. So then um, for two hours, me and my husband were like with the baby, like, you know, bonding and stuff. The nurse cleaned me up a bit and then she cleaned up my baby. Um, and then they, uh, oh yeah, they, they asked me to go use the restroom and see how much blood. Oh, I lost quite a lot of blood too and I... Oh, and I was anemic for a while because of that. Well, I was anemic before that, but, like, that, like, made it worse. So they made me take iron pills, like, but that's a different story. So, um, they made exactly. me, usually, I used the restroom and they put me in the wheelchair and they basically rolled me and my baby out of the labor and delivery, like, room to our actual room where we're going to stay at. Um... My baby was okay. He was uh, perfectly fine. Nothing was wrong with him. He passed all the tests. You know, they, they give the babies, like, the hearing test. Uh, to see if he has jaundice. Like, that test. He, he didn't have jaundice. He was good to go. Uh, we only stayed at the hospital for another day. Because I was tired of being there. I just wanted to be home. Like, even though it was easy being there. Because, like, they would bring you your food. They um, would help you use the restroom and stuff. Um, I didn't want to stay there for too long. It felt like, depressing. So, that was basically my whole labor and delivery story. I don't think there's that much more to it. I, um, I told everything I could remember. I mean, this did happen two months ago. Okay, hi guys. Uh, so I forgot to mention in the video that, um, when I finally got to shower, like, when I was in the hospital room, like, in my own little room, Oh my god, it felt so good to finally shower. Like, I completely forgot to mention that. Like, when I finally showered, it felt so good. I felt so dirty and disgusting that when I finally showered, I felt so good to actually shower. Even though the shower at the hospital was kind of, like, cold, it still felt amazing. It happened two months ago. So, I didn't really... Oh, also, there's something that I didn't record it. Because I was planning on recording my labor and delivery. I didn't record it because my husband's mom was constantly there. Like, she, So that's why I didn't, like, record any of it. Because I felt awkward, you know, recording in front of her. Like, everything. I should have. I should have recorded it. I regret not recording everything. Um, I'll probably insert some pictures of, like, me and my baby. You know, when he was, like, barely, like, born, you know. Um, but that was basically it. My labor and delivery was kind of, um, easy. It wasn't too hard. Like, everything was, like, nice. Like, it was super simple. Like, it wasn't, like, a hard labor and delivery. At least, not physically. It wasn't that hard for me. The only hard part was that I had to get induced. Because I wasn't going into labor naturally. My son just didn't want to come out. He was so comfortable in my oven, you know. He he wanted to bake a little longer, you know. So, he didn't want to come out. So, I had to force him out, you know. I had to get induced to have him be here with me. I know this video is basically like 30 minutes probably or like longer than 30 minutes. I'll try to cut it down to like at least like 30 minutes so it's not that long. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching my story of my labor and delivery. Oh, yeah. I hope I told the story good enough, you know, for you guys to understand it. I mean, it's not that hard to understand. I had a baby, I gave birth, you know. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. And let me know if you guys have any questions of my labor and delivery that I didn't answer. And if you do, um, just leave them down in the comments and I'll try to answer them in the next video. Like I'll make a, like a Q&A maybe if I have any questions, you know. Like my nine subscribers. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Anyway, uh, till next time. Bye guys.